Good afternoon. One of the reasons why I started the struggle for Biafra in 1999 was uh, because of the killing of Undebo in northern Nigeria and some parts of Nigeria. The disruption of lives and property of our people in northern Nigeria and other parts of Nigeria. But over the years, we have tried to reduce the tide. Moreover, since uh, after the so-called uh, 90 days debacle, I have been in constant touch with the youth leaders of the North. Most of them come here. And I have always told them that my biggest problem with the North is the killing of people in the North. And they promised me that that should stop. And that has stopped to a great extent. On their own part, they said I should secure the lives and property of North Nassim in the Southeast, which I agreed has been working. It's been working. There may be some infractions. Every community, every society has its own level of crimes. There is no society that is crime free. There is no society that is crime free. There could be some infraction, uh, one or two. It was to be killed in the farm. One or two of our sisters could be raped. Very unfortunate. But then, it does not mean that all the poor ladies are raped on a, on a daily basis or all the boys are killed. Even during the kidnapping saga that involved one of our own, Evans. Evans was doing kidnapping in Lagos, but Evans is an evil man. Does it mean that uh, all the boys in Lagos are kidnappers? No. Even in the north, we cannot say today that all the boys in the north are holy. Some could be criminals. But it doesn't mean that all the boys are in the north are criminals. If you look in Nigeria today, the southeast is the safest zone among the six zones in Nigeria. The Southeast is the safest zone, is the most peaceful zone in Nigeria. Even if there have been a Montecon in Lagos in the West and the uh, Hizba in the north. We don't need those things in the Southeast. We don't need them. I'm being frank. If we really needed them in the South East, we would have had them. We would have had them. So all this playing to the gallery doesn't make sense to me. It's a caricature to our people. It's, it's a laughing matter. It's laughable to gather us a number of views in the bush dancing with a stick. It doesn't make sense. All these things have regulations. The Hizba in the north has the backing of the law. The Amotekin in the west has the backing of the law. They work with the police. They are regulated. If they arrest people, they hand over to the police. But if you gather people in the southeast without the backing of the law, anything you do is a nullity. If you die in the process, your death is of no consequence. Our people should understand. Anything you do without the force of the law backing you is a nullity. I'm talking as a lawyer, a lawyer of over 30 years standing. Our people should learn. Our people should learn. The Southeast. If there is any threat 
insecurity in, uh, in the southeast. I'm one of those to know. If anybody should talk about security in the southeast today, Wazulite should be one of them. Because no person in the southeast today can come out to say that Wazulite should take the back seat when the issue of, uh, of security arises. Governors could talk of their own states, but I can talk of the entire southeast because I have my members in every family. I have my security men in every family in the southeast. I don't need to put on that. Sorry if I'm so immodest on this, but I know what I'm talking about. Our people are crossing the red lines. I know what I mean. By assembling the young guys in the bush, <laughs> for whatever reason, sends themselves wrong signal to the north that you want to hunt them that you want to attack them, you ask yourself first and foremost, do you have the right? Do you have the, the right to arrest a Fulani herdsman or herdsman? Do you have the right? If you arrest him, who will you hand him over to? I hope we should think. I know when it came the other day, our uh, people were being harassed in the north. I was the one. I was the one that went to Arawa House in Kaduna and discussed the issue. Yupo has started again. If you keep one about uh, one uh, Ibo man, uh, one Alsa man now in the southeast, do you know how many Ibos they will kill in the north? Nobody will talk. All of you will go back to your bedrooms. Nobody will talk, nobody will come out. But now you are clapping hands, John Kitten. You must know the consequences of what you do. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. All these people now who are hovering in the bush, if you want to form a security network, is it in the bush, in the forest? Is that where others you are forming their own? I don't want to stop anybody from being stupid or being a nuisance, you can be wholly uh, uh, useless if you like, but it was written on speak. Some of my friends say, ah, ignore them, they are useless people, they are senseless. I will not ignore anything because I know the consequences of this as a lawyer and as a stakeholder, not only in the southeast, but in Nigeria. Uh, an Igbo man may not regard to Wazirika as a stakeholder in Nigeria, but an Hausa man knows that I'm a stakeholder. A Yoruba man knows I'm a stakeholder. Because if it starts, we know those who will come out to face it. Nandekano should be warned. He enjoys all these things. It was this moon, December, that he says he's going to bring Piafra. That Piafra will come. December 2020. Now, this is December 2020. I brought another Ojoro to, co to, to, to cover up his deficiency. And in a, in a, he doesn't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity. We are here. This is my residence. I'm talking here. You run away. Somebody who cannot withstand the heat. I do in uh, South is a uh, security network and you run away. You come here, stay with us and, uh, and face it. Well, I don't want to talk too much, but I want to warn our people. Look at what happened in uh, the other day. So many people were killed and massacred. Nobody talked about it. The international community didn't bother themselves. Because they felt that those who were killed were terrorists because they were branded terrorists. But look at what happened at the toll gate in Lagos. How many people were killed? Few people. But the international community has come down to raise an inquest to find out. And people should know themselves. These boys now who are in the bush, if the military men surround them and kill all of them, they, they die of for nothing. It's of no consequence because they become terrorists.
Because if you are doing a lawful thing, would it be hiding in the forest to do it? The word is enough for the wise. Thank you.